talking to you guys about blogging honestly. Um, a lot of bloggers, of course, we, you know, want to put beautiful pictures on our blog. We want to share, you know, that lovely craft that we made or, you know, something that came out well, but we also have to share our fails. I think that is very important. And one of the things that I'm going to do this week, giving my present situation is, um, do a post about my, the mistakes that I made with this move that I wish I had done differently. Um, you know, of course, it would be a great opportunity to partner with a brand, do whatever, but in the interest of time and getting the content out there and knowing that so many, you know, small families or young families move. Anybody here moved recently or plan to move soon? Because let me tell you, get your life in order, get your prayers in order. Do I have my comments shut off or anything? No, because I think somebody said no. Somebody said hi. So, all right. So a couple of things that I would do differently is make my husband pack sooner. Oh yeah, you've moved once a year the past three years. I've moved one time, five times in seven years. And those were usually done by professional movers. So these are more like moves you do on your own. It's, it's pretty hellacious. So I told my husband for the past month, start packing, start packing, start packing, go in the garage and clean stuff out. Did he listen to me? No, he did not. He did not listen. And where is he now? Back over at the old place, trying to get stuff out of the garage because he didn't listen. Another thing I would do is not move a box, a thumbtack, or anything until you know that your cable and your Wi-Fi are on at your new location. Yesterday was hellacious. I was on the phone with Comcast for four hours trying to figure out what was wrong. And finally, they did send out a technical person. But I was miserable. My child was miserable. You know, he's an only child. So not having, um, you know, his tablet or TV or all of those things. So I will never, ever, ever do that again. And in my mind, I knew when Comcast said, oh, just take your boxes over there. It should work. I should have second guessed it then. But I did not. Another thing I will do is not let exhaustion, which you always feel at the move, keep me from double checking whether anything is broken. Because by the time we were done with this move, it really only took four hours, but it was a long four hours because I was trying to cram it in while AJ was at school. I should have double checked what the movers did and if they broke anything because I have two broken pieces of furniture. It's not the end of the world. I already signed the thing that said nothing was broken because I was tired and I gave everything a general look, but I will never do that again. I will go, I will make, first of all, I will ask the movers, did you hear anything break? Do you know if you broke anything? Like I'm going to ask them dead to face, like eye to eye. Did you break anything? Do you think anything is broken? Did you hear anything crack? Um, because although they took great time to wrap the outside of our furniture, they didn't necessarily wrap the bottom. And that's where um, two dressers are cracked on the bottom. And you know what? In the interest of my sanity, I'll just get it fixed myself because I don't even feel like dealing with them. Second, well, no, I think I'm on the fourth. If you're moving from one location to the next and it's a local move. Now, not long distance moves. If any of you guys have done that. They put your stuff on a truck with 10 other people and they drop it off as they can, you know, if they're going around the country. But if you're doing a local move, follow that truck from your old house to your new house. Because these guys tried to do the okie doke on me and pull up at the gas station like they were going to get gas, but they really took a 25, I would say a 20 to 30 minute break which I promptly called their supervisor and had that 30 minutes removed from my travel time because that is some certifiable bull donkey. So never again will I let um, a local mover say, oh, I'll meet you over there. No, you're following me or I'm following you or we're following everybody. And I say all this to say that even in your blogging life, there are things that you share in your blog and everything should not be perfect. I just don't think that it should. I've shared stuff that I failed at. I've shared stuff when I've struggled with depression. I've shared stuff um, 
that I might have not thought I did, you know, the best with my son, um, anything like that. I think we need to be honest with our blogs. I think we need to be, because it's almost like, I mean, you're just not being yourself and you'd be amazed at how being honest relates more to people. Being honest about your failures. Let me say that. One of the most popular posts I wrote in the last few months was what it really feels like to be 40 pounds overweight. And it bothered me that it was so popular because I'm like, I don't want everyone just to think that I'm not a fitness blogger or anything. I'm a mom, I'm a wife, but I wanted to express, you know, just the the physical and emotional toil that having that extra weight feels on you. And clearly it it hit a nerve because it got shared a lot. It got seen by a lot of people. And clearly I'm not thin. I'm wearing a dirty shirt and <laughs> like I said, got this pimple and I'm just doing this scope real quick. But tell me for those of you guys who are influencers, I know Dee is here, Chandra's here. Are you honest on your blog? Do you hold bl- do you hold back on purpose or do you feel like you need to be more honest? I mean, I don't know how much more honest I can be because you guys can see this pimple that has been here for like two weeks. I'm telling you, stress is a bleepity bleep. So Janine, D, Chandra, are you guys honest on your blog about failures? <laughs> you hold back because you're afraid of judgment. Crystal holds back. D holds back. Chandra is honest. Jonesy Thompson, you need to be a little bit more transparent. And you can be as transparent as you feel. I mean, I don't think you should show anybody your underwear drawer. But I think, and Crystal, I think if you, and I, and this is not to put words in your mouth or anything, but, you know, when I share stuff about depression, um, a lot more people deal with that than we know. And a lot of African Americans struggle with depression in silence because it's been a community-wide you know, acceptance that, oh, just get over it. Oh, feel better. Oh, just move on. Oh, just do this. And that's the worst one that anybody can even tell you. Get on, move on or get over it if you're depressed. But, you know, when I shared on my blog that there are also resources for people who may not be able to afford a $100 copay every time you see a therapist. If you use your employer's employee assistance program, a lot of those things cost little to nothing for you to go get therapy. So that's why I think if you're honest about something and also provide a solution or, hey, you never know if there's something that you're struggling with, excuse me, and you need you, one of your readers, someone in your audience might have the answer that you don't have. I don't think we should position ourselves as bloggers to be experts about everything because I am not an expert about everything. I know a little about a lot of things is what I think. I think I have a broad you know, knowledge of a lot of things, but I only know a little about them. I mean, some things I know more than others. As a beauty blogger, I don't feature my kids much, but later when I've included them, more response. I think that's good because you know what? Kids are, I know my son especially, he is very honest when I don't look good and when I do look good, but in his opinion, I still look good. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if he saw me today, in the same clothes that I moved in because I'm about to go move some more stuff. He'll be like, Mama, you are beautiful. You know, I think there are a lot of things that our children, we think one way about them and they see things so differently than we do. And they're more honest in a way that, you know, that's what's great about kids is that they're honest. You know, of course he would say, yeah, you have a bump on your face. But he'd say, you have a bump on your face, but you still look beautiful. And I still love you. Because they don't have all that preconceived stuff that the rest of us have. So guys, in the interest of having to finish packing and move stuff from my old place and clean it, I want to encourage you to be honest about something on your blog. You know, write something from a place of pain, from a place of power, from whatever it takes. But I think you need to reveal some things about yourself in order to better connect with your audience. And when I have done that, I've had much better response. And you can even do that with a sponsored post or a product review or anything like that. But you can also do that with content that's not connected with a brand. So that is my take. 
I cannot tell you for sure that I will be here on Thursday because life is cray and there's boxes everywhere. Let me show you. Them. Well, these are boxes. This is my bubble wrapped sofa. There's boxes. I'm sitting on a bubble wrapped cat wrap. See, I still got to get that off. Somebody's saying something. I revealed something on Facebook today. Funny. Everyone. Oh, Z bath and body. Glad. And I'm glad Chandra. Yeah, you should reveal something about yourself. Like I said, don't take folks into your underwear drawer and tell them all about your sex life or anything. But you can reveal something that comes from a place of pain, comes from a place of power, something that you're celebrating, all of that. I don't know if I'll be back on Thursday. I will try to be back. Saturday, we have a birthday party. So y'all are just going to have to catch me on the fly until my life regroups and I can give you a clear scope schedule. So thanks for watching. Go on your blogs. Be honest. Share something. Go forth. See y'all later.